why do, we, why do people go to cities? Why did they originally go to cities? They went to cities to live longer, to live healthier. And during the Industrial Revolution, people in slums in my country, where my family come from, slums in my country, didn't live longer. They made a risk trade-off where they made sure they put food on the table, but they died of illnesses related to the contamination in the cities. What we now have is more or less 80% of the urban citizens of the world are living in a situation where that trade-off is not worthwhile. So I'm going to give you two examples. One is Calcutta. I worked for five years in Calcutta in a team of 50 people trying to turn around probably one of the most contaminated cities in the world. You have people in Calcutta, and sorry, this gives me goosebumps. I'm afraid I'm going back to Argentina to a situation very much like that, and I'm very happy I am, but this gives me goosebumps. There is nothing I can do as a doctor to watch young people who are recycling lead batteries by hand in a bonded labor system in the slums of Calcutta. They put food on their table and they have a life expectancy of about 40 years. If you go to another city, a beautiful city like Rio, I'm sure that's a big city that you all know about, Rio is home to one of the richest men in the world. That man now wants to build a private city outside Rio that he says will be a mixture of Los Angeles, Houston, and New York. And you think that's funny? Meanwhile, that city is home to some of the poorest children in the world who live on the streets. And I'm gonna give you one story, one little boy a few years ago, was shot in the head, and he had a note tied round his neck that said, I'm sorry, I shot you because you have no opportunities and no future. If you look at the epidemiological profile of Rio, Rio's level of violence related to the inequality means that they bought into this entire myth that you could give people water, sanitation, and education, and they'd be fine. You could have all the inequalities you wanted, and they'd be fine. And what happens? The kids want smartphones. They can't get smartphones. The kids want, want, want what I've seen all of you have, and I saw some of you looking for extra ones yesterday. They want exactly that American dream that Byron was talking about yesterday, and they shoot each other, and they try and shoot other people for it. They're doing that to such levels that we would call that war levels of mortality, and they're doing it to such levels that their life expectancy is now declining in Rio. Now, in epidemiological terms, you're not epidemiologists. In epidemiological terms, that is extraordinary. They have levels of homicide in most cities in Latin America. Rio is not an exception. Related to those inequalities, that, mean that, that means that they have bought into this dream that your country sells, and my country and Europe is no different. And they've bought into that dream thinking that will buy them well-being in the future. Not only is that model not buying them well-being, we all know that it's environmentally bankrupt, and it's socially bankrupt. I do think that cities, I genuinely think that cities are the solution. But if the only thing we're selling people all over the world through communication technology is a myth of an American dream that is neither sustainable nor possible, I really think that we need to think seriously about